What's going on everybody? It's me, Stock Picks by Tim, and in today's video, I'm gonna look over Synthionic stock or SENS. We've got an interesting article to go over. I'm gonna look over their chart, give you my thoughts there, and hopefully later on I'll be able to do a Clean Spark earnings video. The earnings is coming up after hours. It may be a bit of a time crunch for me to be able to get that out, but definitely gonna be working on that. And then we also have the Fed rate hike coming up too. But for now, let's look over Synthionics. Haven't talked about this one in a while, and it definitely remains a high conviction stock for me. But let's look at some things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I definitely appreciate it. Don't forget to check out all the links down below. And let's go. So first off, I want to look over this article. It is a little old, but I think it's uh, got a lot of information that's important to see here. It gives you a little bit of uh, details about other companies that are direct competition to Sensionics. And first off, it goes into Dexcom. This is a huge company, and this is one company that I like to model Sensionics against sometimes. Now, this company's market cap, I could definitely see Sensionics over the long haul getting towards there. But look at what's going on with Dexcom here as of this article. So Dexcom announced in March that it received European approval for its much anticipated G7 CGM continuous glucose monitoring system for people with diabetes ages two and older, including pregnant women. Now this G7 sends real time glucose readings automatically to a compatible smart device or receiver, no finger pricks required. The G7 also offers customizable alerts that can warn of high or low glucose levels, help users spend more time in range. Now, it says that same month, the San Diego-based company won the FDA's breakthrough device designation for its CGM to be used in the hospital setting, but Dexcom's G7 CGM has yet to gain FDA approval. This holdup is due to administration's concerns over the software system alerts. Now, according to their earnings call in October, Dexcom does still expect FDA clearance and plans on a limited launch before this year's end. However, this article says with December about to begin, there's no news on that yet. So that could be kind of a good thing for Sensionics. And then here we get into Sensionics right here. Competition heats up. Dexcom could face more pressure in the CGM market thanks to Sensionics announcement the same month of FDA approval. And this is the first FDA approved CGM to include a fully implantable sensor to detect glucose which can be worn for up to 90 days. And we all know they also have a 180 day product and a 365 day product they're working on. However, Dexcom and Synthionics have more competition as well. We've got Abbott. Abbott also has an OGM, but this one is, did I say OGM? A CGM, this isn't BNGO. They have a CGM, a continuous glucose monitoring device. This is the Freestyle Libre. This one is actually one that I've heard about a lot. See advertisements for it as well. Now this one is for people four years and older. It was FDA approved here at the end of May, 2022. And their vice president says it's a game changer for the millions of people living with diabetes. They'll be able to manage their health minute by minute with the world's smallest and thinnest sensor and most accurate 14 day continuous glucose monitoring system. So they have a 14 day, whereas Synthionics has a 90 day and they're working on even longer duration. Now Abbott's Freestyle Libre has some positive press here because it was shown that it helped reduce diabetes related hospitalizations. And according to that study, the people with type two diabetes using the Freestyle Libre had a 67% fewer acute diabetes event or ADE related hospitalizations. One year after initiating the Freestyle Libre treatment, the data showed a 75% reduction in hospitalizations for diabetic ketoacidosis and a 44% reduction in admissions to severe hypoglycemia. I almost feel like a scientist with these big words. So just glancing over this article and seeing some of the competition, at least, you know, you'll see Dexcom is waiting FDA approval. You'll see that this uh, Freestyle Libre by Abbott is only a 14 day CGM. Just really makes you think, you know, once Synthionics gets out there more and continues to get more well known in the science community or medical community, maybe I should say. And now I also wanted to show you this, but there's really not much to it unless you want to pay for it. It is stuck behind a paywall. And let me show you something crazy here. While this is probably insanely good research, it even has like a whole book about just all these companies compared. It goes deep. It definitely goes deep. However, looking at the cost of this, you're talking about a couple thousand dollars. Jeez, I'm in the wrong business here. But that's just insane, guys. I'm, I'm wondering actually how many people have actually paid for that. That's just crazy. I'm sure there's a lot of very valuable information in that, but I just can't see spending multiple thousands of dollars just for some information you can dig up yourself for the most part. But next up, let's look at a couple more things Synthionics wise, financial wise specifically, and then we're gonna look at the chart here. Now, first off, we all know this is not a profitable company. There's definitely risk to this. But one thing I wanted to note to you guys, while they do have a negative EPS, that sits somewhere around three to five cents over this whole year. 
negative three to five cents this whole year. But keep a mental note, keep a very small mental note in your head that these numbers, these EPSs, if you introduce more shares on a negative EPS, that negative will be less negative. Just as if you introduce more shares on a positive EPS, that positive earnings per share will change because of the amount of shares. So always keep that in mind when you see numbers that are very consistent. There's likely a little bit of dilution here, but as I've said before, I believe in this product. This is the whole point of the stock market. The stock market was created for these companies to acquire capital so that they can grow their business. And so the rich elites can get richer. Shh. But looking at Sensionix, you'll see consistent revenue growth with exception of their quarter reported in March. That was a $4 million quarter kind of regressed a little bit, but then we had a record breaking quarter here, our last quarter, which is great. Now I'm really curious why the dip in revenue, I think if I remember right, it was because they were changing their product and they were transitioning from one CGM to another. I could be wrong there. This could also be due to just the economy. However, with medical stocks like this, I don't see how necessarily a bad economy could uh, change revenue very much because you think about medical, stuff like that you know if someone needs something they need something they can't decide to go without it however i guess you know some folks could just decide to go with the finger prick instead of deciding to go with an ogm but it's just kind of interesting to see where things have gone could this be due to the economy and things kind of got bad but they're slowly getting better something to think about and another thing i wanted to show you here is they do have cash of 154 million dollars as of their last earnings report this is where this is derived from so it's about a month from being accurate because we have had a little bit of time since their last earnings. But looking at their debt to cash or cash to debt, they have a decent amount of cash, 154.2 million. Debt is 72 million. One thing you'll see is their cash flow. Over a year, they have a negative $60 million in cash flow. Just looking at that, seems to me that they have a decent amount of run rate for how much cash they have on hand. Yes, they do have to eventually get to this debt, but they have a decent cash to debt ratio. They're not upside down. And while this company isn't profitable, you can definitely see this cash coming down while this debt potentially increases. They definitely have a decent amount of run rate. But one thing to think about is, you know, maybe a year, year and a half from now, something like that, they could potentially need to dilute, could definitely do a share offering, maybe acquire more debt, something of that nature. And while that is seen as a bad thing for stocks, obviously, you don't want to see dilution. If it's a company you have high conviction in, if it's a company that you believe in their product and you believe that product's gonna grow exponentially, then you know I'm all right with a little bit of dilution knowing that that company will continue to survive. I mean, just imagine some of these larger companies if they never diluted their stock. Where would Tesla be? Where would some of these companies be? Think about that for a second. Now, of course, we don't want dilution. We don't want that, and especially at its current price. However, dilution is a necessary evil at some times. Not saying it'll be anytime soon, but it could be on the horizon. And looking at this chart, you know, it's had a very volatile time, a lot of swings down, then swings up. One thing you'll notice when uh, we broke a dollar, we kind of got this wick. We get these occasional wicks here. I like to call these stop loss hunt wicks. You can call them what you want, but you know, once we broke a dollar, it was quick to come back. It seemed like it didn't really want to stay under a dollar. And typically when you see a company break that dollar, that's seen as a very bad thing because if it's under a dollar, it risks delisting. They get a message from the uh, nasdaq saying that hey you know your stock's under a dollar if you fail to comply within 180 days get it back over a dollar either by um, reverse splitting or by the stock price naturally going up you're gonna get delisted off the nasdaq so that's just one thing to be aware of you know but when you see this company it seems to be holding very well over a dollar but you'll see we're catching resistance here on this red line this 200 ema here i personally think we're not going to see much of a push yet in my eyes, the market is still very iffy. The market's still in pain. Who's to say where it goes? It could come out surprising. We could get a surprising uh, good rate hike and the market could have a little short-term pump. But what we know in the end is the Fed's gonna continue to raise rates. I wouldn't be surprised to see a continued bear market and that wouldn't help companies, small companies like Sensionics. These companies that have some debt that aren't making a profit are definitely companies that Wall Street's avoiding right now just because of their risk. And if this market remains very, very tough for longer than expected, you know, companies, not necessarily in my eyes, Sensionics, but companies, small caps like Sensionics that don't make a profit, that have a little bit of debt, maybe have way less cash on their balance sheet. You know, those kinds of companies are going to be having a very hard time with a company like Sensionics, with companies like Bingo, you know, I know that they have a decent amount of cash on hand, but of course this cash can go down over time because they're not profitable. 
And Wall Street knows this. They are being careful with these companies. That being said, I've got long-term conviction in Synceonics, but just know that it's not without its risk. But just imagine Synceonics being a nice fraction of where Dexcom is. $47 billion company right now, Dexcom is. Where's Synceonics? Synceonics is sitting at half a billion dollars. For this to be even half of what Dexcom is, what is that, a 20x? Now, I'm not saying Synceonics is anywhere near taking over Dexcom or becoming the company Dexcom is, but something to think about over the long term. Just imagine that potential. This is the market we're talking about. But that's it for now, guys. Hope you enjoyed my short video about Synceonics. Let me know what you think about Synceonics stock down below. Thanks as always and take it easy.